welcome and uh, greetings to all our listeners and supporters. This is our um, very first uh, public lecture. And uh, hopefully uh, we can produce more. Uh, this lecture is uh, about bananas and growing bananas in New Zealand. But uh, firstly, let me uh, welcome you and uh, introduce myself. My name is uh, Semisi Bonne. I am the chief executive of the University of Polynesia project. And I currently hold the chair of the professor of the University of Polynesia, which was previously known as the School of Tongan Traditions and Dance. The School of Tongan Traditions and Dance will continue to operate, but under the future auspices of the University of Polynesia. Um, my background um, was in science, and uh, I had attended uh, school in Tonga, uh, primary and secondary school. And I came to New Zealand and attended uh, Albert Grammar and the University of Auckland. Uh, after graduation with my Bachelor of Science in 1985, I returned to Tonga and worked as an uh, agriculture officer and uh, plant pathologist. And I went on to do a uh, Master of Science with honors uh, also in, in Auckland in 1987, graduating in 1989. And I returned to Tonga and uh, was promoted to senior plant virologist uh, after the Master of uh, Science degree. Uh, here I am. Uh, uh, on this picture here with my friend uh, Roger Burnaby when we graduated in uh, 1985 outside the Auckland Gallery on uh, Simon Street. Uh, we had started uh, together in Tonga High School uh, way back in 1974. The first project I worked in in Tonga in 1985 was a banana research project to support the Tongan banana export industry, which uh, received a $5 million aid uh, program from New Zealand at the, at the time. Um, the scientific work I was involved in, in the past, uh, with uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, University of the South Pacific and also the South Pacific Commission. Um, at the uh, University of the South Pacific, I was a fellow in tissue culture from 92 to 93. I was responsible for uh, looking after a sweet potato collection, a banana variety collection, and uh, some uh, smaller ones. The uh, sweet potato collection was more than 200 uh, accessions or different uh, types. And uh, we supplied uh, member countries uh, with uh, various tissue cultured uh, popular Pacific crops for their research and uh, hurricane recovery programs. And uh, in 1993, I moved to the uh, South Pacific Commission in Fiji, which is a bigger organization than the USP, uh, with 27 member countries, including Australia, New Zealand, uh, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And I've heard that uh, after I left, the United Kingdom had uh, uh, departed and so there's only 26 member countries at the moment. 
I was also involved with uh, quarantine in Tonga. I was the secretary of the quarantine committee, and I was responsible for post-entry quarantine for the whole of Tonga. And uh, at the South Pacific Commission, I was the head of the plant protection services, uh, coordinating seven major projects with a total budget of uh, more than $30 million. And uh, when we established the uh, Pacific Plant Protection Organization in 1994, I was also the uh, chief executive for the first uh, three years or two and a half years. Uh, the major scientific achievements uh, uh, that I had been uh, uh, involved in, firstly was the uh, co-discovery of the vanilla viruses in Tonga. There were three viruses, uh, the vanilla necrosis potivirus, symbidium mosaic virus, and odontoglossum ring spot virus. And also developing a test uh, to the vanilla necrosis potivirus, which was a very, very complicated procedure of purifying the virus, injecting the virus into a rabbit to produce uh, antisera, and developing a test known as, as ELISA using the antisera. And we also achieved control of the vanilla viruses in Tonga, uh, which was uh, uh, key to the rapid increase of uh, vanilla dried bean export from uh, 20 tons to more than 200 tons. Uh, so um, uh, that was a very, very uh, significant uh, increase. The co-discovery of cover dieback virus in the Pacific and the world, there was work that I had done together with uh, University of uh, the Australian National University and the Australian uh, Centre for International Agricultural Research with uh, their man uh, PhD student uh, Richard Davis and also supervisor Professor John Brown and uh, the Asia coordinator Dr Paul Ferrar. Control of cover dieback viruses around the world I had uh, also uh, uh, contributed to the uh, uh, advisory and I have a number of books in Amazon.com uh, to uh, explain all those uh, works. And one of the biggest projects uh, in Tonga was uh, vanilla um, squash pumpkin export. And uh, I was involved in the research and also control of Sukin yellow mosaic, which was a very, very severe disease of uh, cucurbits, including uh, pumpkins. And some of the achievements uh, I was involved in uh, around the world was firstly the establishment of the Pacific Plant Protection Organization in 1994. I was also invited as a, um, an expert uh, to two of the committees at the United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization in Rome, the Biosecurity Committee, and also the uh, Regional Plant Protection Organization uh, Technical Committee. Our public lecture today on growing bananas in New Zealand is a project my company is currently involved in. Since we uh, moved to New Zealand, I have been involved on various uh, business projects. And uh, my company at the moment is doing uh, some research and development in other areas and crops, which may be a subject of a future lecture. But uh, today is on bananas. Um, just to start off uh, our talk, um, I'd like to spend some time uh, looking at the origin of the banana and uh, its history. Uh, most of the books and uh, literature that you'll find uh, probably uh, uh, put the origin of banana cultivation at around 10,000 uh, years uh, before Christ. And uh, some say they originate in Asia 
or, uh, or New Guinea, but generally uh, uh, that uh, area of Southeast Asia. And there are roughly about uh, 1,000 varieties of bananas globally. So it is quite possible that different varieties originate from widely spaced and environmentally different areas. That is why banana varieties look very different, look very different because of uh, adaptations to different climatic conditions. For example, the plantains and common dish varieties, uh, the plantain fruit uh, usually fatter and shorter, while the common dish are longer and thinner. Um, the literature uh, has a very, very uh, uh, big history on uh, banana trade, but uh, in summary, um, the traders who came to Southeast Asia from India, Arabia, Africa, took uh, the bananas back with them. And uh, it is mentioned in uh, Buddhist uh, scriptures around uh, 600 before Christ, 600 years before Christ. It is also uh, mentioned um, in the history of Alexander the Great uh, when he invaded India in uh, 327 BC. They discovered that bananas were already cultivated there. And after eating it, he liked it so much that he took it back with him and spread it uh, in the West. By 200 AD, uh, the bananas has uh, already reached China, and the historian uh, Yang Fu uh, in China mentioned that the bananas only grew in the southern regions there, but weren't popular until the 20th century. And by 600 AD, bananas and plantain were developed in Africa, where it became a major crop uh, today. Uh, banana is thought to come from the Arabic uh, banan, meaning finger, and the plantain comes from the Spanish plantano, because it looks like some tree in Spain. The Cavendish banana is named after Englishman William Spencer Cavendish, the sixth Duke of Devonshire, who caught some plants from uh, Chinese bananas that were sent to Mauritius in 1826, and his gardener grew them in glass houses. And um, missionary Reverend John Williams took some of the suckers um, to Samoa, and then uh, it spread from there to Tonga and Fiji in the 1840s. And some Fijians uh, who worked in Australia took some uh, bananas with them. And they're still grown in Australia today. Uh, that variety is known as Williams. Uh, the genetics of uh, bananas um, is um, very, very similar to uh, what's happening with watermelon. Uh, but Cavendish uh, was actually um, genetically modified through selective breeding, uh, not uh, genetic engineering, and uh, it was for commercial purposes. And since uh, 7,000 years ago, bananas were already known to be grown for sale. So um, the banana of commerce, Cavendish, is thought to have uh, originated uh, as a cross between two uh, varieties, or two species actually, Musa acuminata and Musa balbiciana. Uh, sterility is caused by crossing a tetraploid and a diploid banana to produce a triploid banana with three sets of chromosomes. And because of the odd numbers of chromosomes, uh, the pollen is sterile. Uh, <coughs> bananas are replicated uh, asexually through their suckers or the, the sh small shoots on the side of the, the main comb. And uh, so they are genetically uh, identical. Every uh, sucker is identical 
with the new ones coming out. And so this is very good for production of uniform fruit for the market. But it means also that genetically, uh, it will be susceptible to disease. Uh, Linnaeus, the uh, Swedish botanist, who first proposed the use of the binomial uh, classification, had named uh, uh, the uh, banana in two types, or he classified them as two types of bananas. One was the cooking banana, was called Musa paradisiaca. Paradisiaca is actually uh, a word that came from uh, paradise, meaning the Garden of Eden. And uh, it was a reference to the forbidden fruit. Uh, maybe he thought that the banana was the forbidden fruit in the, in the Garden of Eden. And uh, the second type was the uh, dessert banana, and this is the uh, ripening uh, or the ripened banana. Musa sapientum was the name that he gave to the ripe banana. Um, now, the three varieties I will discuss in this talk, um, uh, the first one is uh, Missiluki which is a cooking banana. It's called in uh, Samoan Missiluki, but um, it can also be ripened uh, uh, and used for dessert and uh, also cooked uh, uh, as a, uh, I suppose, uh, cooked uh, banana dessert. Uh, this banana is uh, probably the, the Musa acuminata of history or this type of banana. And uh, there is a Tongan version uh, of the ladyfinger with smaller fingers known as misipeka. Uh, Musa akiminata is generally known as the ladyfinger bananas. And so that includes these two, uh, misiluki and misipeka. And these pictures are showing the, uh, the young uh, bunch of banana and a bunch of banana on the right, which is just starting to turn yellow or ripe. Now the next uh, variety uh, we will talk about is uh, the hoppa in Tongan, which is uh, the plantain uh, in the uh, Linnaeus uh, classification, uh, the Musa paradisiaca. And uh, this is the cooking banana or the plantain. And the third one is the Cavendish. Um, and the pictures here on the left uh, shows a, a bunch of uh, giant Cavendish banana. But I suspect that this picture is actually of a variety known as Cross Michel, which was popular before the Cavendish uh, actually took on the market. The Crosby shell has a big problem with uh, disease, and that's why they took on the Cavendish because it's more resistant. That bunch on the right uh, is already ripe, so uh, you can tell that it looks exactly like the bananas in the supermarket. So this is the banana of commerce, the giant Cavendish. There's also a um, dwarf Cavendish with fruits that look very similar, and the tree also look very similar, but it's only about half the size of the giant Cavendish. Uh, the dwarf Cavendish uh, is known uh, by the Tongan name Siaine Tonga, and probably uh, one of the earliest uh, bananas introduced into Tonga. Yeah, so I have mentioned those uh, three varieties that we'll talk about. And these are uh, actually the three varieties that are grown in New Zealand. Those pictures that you saw were bananas grown in New Zealand. Uh, there is also another variety which is rarer. I have only seen one uh, uh, grower growing it in New Zealand and it's called a pata in Tongan. Uh, it's, uh, 
a plantain, uh, but it's got very fat uh, fingers, uh, a bit like the misiluki, but uh, the fingers are much fatter and, and uh, bigger. Uh, the distribution of these bananas are mostly in the north of the North Island of New Zealand, where frosty and cold days are short and last only a week or so. In Auckland, for example, the winter temperature is very mild and usually between 8 to 14 degrees centigrade. On the coldest days, summer temperatures range from 17 to 23 degrees centigrade on average. So highs of 26 degrees or more are not uncommon, and that is very tropical heat and very good for banana. The uh, Misiluki and Mispeka were probably introduced into the Pacific Islands during the time of the Reverend Shirley Baker, who was the uh, Prime Minister of Tonga from 1881 to 1890. The name of uh, Missy Baker is a Tonganized version of Mr. Baker or Misa Baker. And the Reverend Shirley Baker is, is actually well known to uh, influence in uh, in the new crops that he introduced to Tonga, which included the banana and cassava, according to uh, local stories. And these bananas were introduced to New Zealand, most likely from Tonga and Samoa, who were earlier specific islanders to migrate to New Zealand. Uh, for example, uh, migration from Samoa started earlier in the 20th century when Western Samoa was a uh, colony of New Zealand and followed by Tongans who came to New Zealand as uh, hired labourers a few decades later. The Hopa plantain uh, was probably introduced to Tonga earlier than the Cavendish banana and ladyfinger in the migrations uh, from Asia because it uh, is mentioned in some of the old legends and uh, some references as well. But uh, it is quite possible that uh, they may have been later stories because um, the history of uh, the banana, as we have seen, were brought by the missionaries. So uh, Hoppa Plantain may have been one of those uh, bananas brought by uh, the missionaries. And Hopa plantain was uh, probably introduced to New Zealand by Tongans with the first migration waves of the 60s and 70s. And they came in boats and uh, probably the quarantine was non-existent in those days. So they were bringing plants and all sorts of uh, goods with them. Uh, banana nutrition is uh, one of the main reasons why it is very popular is a good source of carbohydrate, potassium, vitamins, B6 and other B vitamins, vitamin C and also high in fiber and antioxidants. And there's no fat, cholesterol or salt. So uh, that is very popular with uh, the health conscious uh, movement. And uh, it's also a very, very good source of uh, energy for uh, uh, all sorts of uh, sports people. The economics of bananas in New Zealand is um, probably one of the biggest imports uh, in terms of uh, plant products. Uh, there's between 70 to 80,000 tons of bananas imported per year into New Zealand, mostly of the giant Cavendish for ripening. The biggest uh, uh, banana in the market is the ripe banana. And there's also a small amount uh, for the green banana and plantain cooking market. There's also a small amount of plantain. So uh, that is two to three hundred million dollars a year spent on bananas. So a very, very uh, a big industry. And uh, the large Pacific and Asian population in New Zealand, in the region of one to two million people, is a very, very big market for plantain uh, and green bananas. So um, Auckland is a very, very big market for 
green uh, and uh, plantain, green banana and plantain. Uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even in the 80s, Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji were the suppliers of bananas in New Zealand. But uh, the problem with uh, disease, insects, nematodes, and also post-harvest uh, quality issues increased the production cost and reduced the quality. It was so um, uh, significant that the profit, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, killed the, the industry. And uh, as well, the in introduction of uh, bananas from Ecuador and the Philippines, which were looking a lot better and even taste better that uh, people were buying them instead of the Pacific bananas.